Hey gang, we did it. I'm at the Queen of Heaven Cemetery Administration offices. We have hit 200,000 subscribers. Can you believe it? I cannot, I, I didn't see this day coming way back when, but it has arrived and it's really a tribute to you, all of you, all this great participation, this community that we're building that is growing. I mean, that's the most exciting part for me. I think that is the most exciting part for you too. It's, it's just feels like a big family, our gang. And I think that all the great comments in the comments, I love reading the comments, all the great participation, all the great support. We're here because I want to tribute you, the viewers, the subscribers, the, the contributors, uh, we're going to basically look at and talk about some of the progress we're making right now. I gave you a sneak peek to this a little bit ago from this location, but now we're going to really dive into it. And the one thing I want to also emphasize and thank the subscribers who have committed money in Patreon, in PayPal, um, in Super Chats, some people have sent even checks. Don't send checks. I, I don't know how you found out my company. My company's like, what is this? Who, who's, what's going on here? But anyway, really appreciate every nickel that has been sent and we're putting it all to good use. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start with Joe Reinholtz's grave and the statue that we're going to replace. Who's Joe Reinholtz? Well, we're gonna go to Frank Truce's office right now. He's down the street, Truce Monument, and we're gonna talk about it, so let's go. Hey gang, I am with Frank Truce from Truce Monument Company on Roosevelt Road here in Hillside. Remember we did an episode here and Frank took us around the shop and showed us how gravestones were made and markers. And we're gonna be doing some follow-up episodes here on the porcelains and how they make those and the sculpture. We might even meet with him later today. But right now, we wanna have a discussion on Joe Reinholtz's statue. Who's Joe Reinholtz? Well, I'm gonna put the episode here in the upper right-hand corner, and I guess that would be here. <laughs> and you can watch that episode if you haven't seen it. He is buried at Queen of Heaven Cemetery. Now, Joe Reinholtz is the man who witnessed and would see apparitions or visions of the Blessed Mother. And he had a big following here, and he was a very well-respected man. He originally went to Metagornia and the children, and it's a whole big story. But why we're here today is uh, over a year ago when I did the episode, we noticed during the episode that, holy cow, his statue, there was a, a bronze statue of the Blessed Mother and Child, and it was missing and the holes were there and it's like did somebody steal this i don't know or what happened so we've been doing a lot of research frank has been helping us a ton of course he's the expert and trying to trace from the company what was the company it was um Frank and Sons, or what was the, the that? guys that did it originally? Uh, Bertacki and Sons. Right. They sold and the memorial originally. So the bottom line is we are, we just got permission, as I posted recently from Queen of Heaven Cemetery admin offices, we've got permission from the directors to allow us to, to, to buy and replace that statue. So the discussion we're having before we just shoot ahead and do this is should we do it in bronze exactly as it was or should we pivot to granite and again why would we have that discussion well if somebody did steal and we don't know but if somebody did steal it they stole it for one of two reasons one the material to melt down and sell it and we've seen that before when we were in memphis like the memphis bell that cemetery I did, they had stole a big elk with a pickup truck of bronze, a monument there for, to melt down. Or did somebody in a warped way steal it for spiritual purposes? You know, no, I don't know that there's a payoff there, but we, you know, there's so many strange people. And it really comes down to, you know, do we do it in granite or do we do it in bronze? I mean, I think we want to do it the way it was, but we don't want to see it stolen now you had said you get a 10-year 
guaranteed? Yes, in, in, uh, against uh, the theft. So yes. in replacing the statue, which we've been given permission to do, bronze versus granite. Again, my immediate thought, and, and Frank, you know, being the expert, I, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, we're going to do this in granite because we don't want anybody to steal it. But your thought is, I mean, if they're stealing it, I mean, the first thing you noticed was that the attachments were faulty, probably, and maybe it fell over, or maybe it was discarded, or not discarded, but maybe just somebody grabbed it because it was laying on the ground because it was loose. Well, and, yes, but, but it could have never fallen over because right. it, would, it would have had uh, rods in the bottom. Right. And uh, as evidenced by so the somebody holes in the, in the pedestal, yes, right. someone would have had to physically lift it up. Actually, I might add monuments and statues are personal property of, of the person that owns it and put it up. Right. If that person was still alive, they could very often claim on their homeowner's policy oh, interesting. that this was an item of their personal property wow. that was stolen. Never thought and, of that. And they, uh, uh, they, they would uh, very possibly get uh, reimbursed for uh, oh. replacement. So. Okay. So the discussion on granite versus bronze, again, would love to do it in bronze. I want to do it the exact same way. And then we roll the dice. If someone steals it for the copper, the bronze value, meltdown, whatever, I think it sounds like it wasn't attached well. It sounds like if we attach it this time, we have the 10 year guarantee that the odds of that go way down. And the other thing I was thinking of, you know, if you go to granite, if somebody wanted the statue for spiritual value, I mean, there's there's two, if, if it was stolen, we don't know, but if it was not the monetary value of the material and it was the, you know, warped, like if I bring this home, I'm gonna be more blessed. If we do it in granite, they'll just, they'll just knock it off. They'll break it off if they want it. So I don't know that there's any advantage to to do it in granite. I mean, what's your thoughts? Well, uh, my thinking that that, uh, that the family chose this uh, is a right. combination right. of uh, uh, bronze and granite. Uh, certainly when they're new, before they start to uh, oxidize and patina, they're very lovely, the bronze statue. Right. Uh, Where well, the granite statue is, you know, it's, it's just okay. It's a stone, it a, a stone statue. Right. You can't get the fine details and things right. uh, in, in the, a carved granite statue that you can in a, a bronze. Now, a, a, lot of, a lot of statues in churches and things, or you've seen Italy or Greece, beautiful stone statues, but they're marble. And you can get a lot finer features on a, on, a, on a marble statue than granite. And we know what happens that, to marble here. That, that marble, uh, you know, is like cutting butter compared to cutting uh, granite. I mean, right. the plus is that granite will doesn't weather uh, at all right. and can last to the the end of but time. Marble. So, <laughs> but no, marble isn't going to do that. It 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 depends which marble and what the right. situation is, and maybe they got a life of a hundred years. So, but anyway, they wouldn't let us do a, a marble statue anyway. So, if we were going to keep with what the family originally selected, they selected a bronze uh, a statue uh, with their uh, pink uh, uh, granite monument, and uh, and there isn't any really a pink to to match the right. that if we use that's the pink granite. And uh, I don't know. It, it it seems to me that's what they uh, uh, originally chose and intended. Uh, okay. And 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 it's the proportions are set up for this narrow, you know, uh, uh, tall statue. So right. that, that's what I. Do. So the attached. So I think yeah. we're going to go with bronze, guys, and I'm I'm in agreement with Frank. Now, when you attach it, Frank, are you going to do anything differently, or just do it? You said there was no epoxy in there. We I guess the thing to do is is use the same holes. And uh, here's a picture of that Frank took that you can see of the, the holes, and there wasn't any sign of epoxy there, but the, 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 why don't you explain to everybody how you would do this? Well, no, normally these statues uh, uh, come with uh, uh, a couple of bosses underneath the, the statue that you screw brass rods into, and then you drill holes into wherever you're going to, uh, to, to mount the statue, and um, you uh, you fill the, uh, the or put epoxy in the holes. You put uh, epoxy on the threaded rods, 
you put that okay. down, um, you uh, caulk the edges with silicone caulk, uh, and uh, then once it settles, uh, you know, and the epoxy hardens, and uh, it's it's really a very permanent so insulation. Trying think... to get it off, it'd be a real problem. You almost have to get underneath. But what about after? Rods. 30 years. Now, I work a lot with epoxy. It's very brittle. Maybe there's different epoxies, but I've had epoxy, like I've epoxied a shower head, and of course there's moving water, but it just, after time, it just popped off. It just, it's brittle. Well, you, well, it's got a, it's got a grip, you know, true. and if, yeah. uh, I, I think that can be an issue. What they use is not just hardware store epoxy. Got, it's, okay. it's a product called Domo. I think they get it from a company in Germany. It's okay. specifically made for stonework. Okay, great. So, uh, so it's not going anywhere. Uh, no. Okay. No. So they, they it's a statue that. that we can anticipate be, that people will come to visit his grave and they will touch the statue. They will probably rub it well, because I think I, someone I talked to, I think it was Frank, said that was that was the the problem before, and it. It yeah, shouldn't that, be a problem. Yeah, that, no, that's not Frank. You use Frank, but that's not the guy's name at Pertakis. The son's no. uh, uh, name is Mike. Uh, uh, not the son? I, I think that you talked to the son, and I think his name was Mike. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's... Um, uh, 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 you know what? I'm. Uh, it's Jeff. Jeff Pertakis. Jeff, excuse me. It's okay. Jeff, who yeah. I talked to. Sorry about that. Yeah, actually, he's got Jeff. a brother, Mike, but Mike, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's works Jeff. Out. So I think Jeff was the one who told me that people came and they would touch it. And you know what? I think that's great. But the, and, and the reason I believe that is when I was doing the filming, I just got lucky to be at, you know, where the crucifix is and the, the, uh, yeah, the, the uh, grotto, yeah, yeah, or if yeah, you will, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, it, there were a lot of people coming and oh, there praying were. there. Oh, I just got a lucky moment because I didn't want to. So I would okay. expect that we're going to have people, and that's fine, touch Whatever spiritual or visiting, that's great. But I'm really happy to know that if we do the epoxy, and it looks like they didn't do that before, that uh, this this will. I, I think I think that's the way to go. Now you were saying, where does the statue come? The original statue came from Germany. Uh, it did. The, the, the Strassinger Bronze Company in in Germany. You probably the a, a lot of the uh, monuments in, in in Germany, particularly Bavaria, with a big Catholic uh, population, they use uh, bronze statues. They use bronze letters and ornaments that they attach to the to their granite. Uh, uh, monuments okay. and, and they, they 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 make lovely lovely items. Uh, the, the thing about it is, though, um, they they make a certain item for a period of time. They don't make it anymore because they don't want you know to keep repeating the same thing. You know, right. want to go to the cemetery and see eighteen statues just like yours. So the the one that was used here was long ago discontinued. Long gone. Uh, yeah, and, and in looking through their catalog, they don't really have uh, anything. Uh, uh, very okay. close. What, okay. What's a little unusual about the uh, the, the picture uh, or the statue is the, uh, the Blessed Mother's got the, the child Jesus and uh, he's hold, she's holding the child down about, uh, by her waist. Well, about all the, the statues that I see the Blessed Mother and child, she's got it up higher. Oh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, I couldn't find another one right. from, uh, uh, there's a number of Italian bronze companies and there was nothing very uh, and a, close and a, to it. To so. custom make that exactly would be. Yeah, it would. Then they have to make a model, uh, you know, you know okay. for, uh, and then they have to, you know, do a, uh, a, a probably casting wouldn't special be, model. Probably wouldn't be prudent to. Uh, well, it wouldn't be exactly the same anyway. Right. I mean, it'd be fairly similar, but uh, okay. I, I think that the that uh, we we just happen to have. Uh, we, we had two of these statues with the uh, uh, Blessed Mother on hand, and it just happens, and one was sold, and there's, and there's one here that happens to be the, the same height. Oh, uh, okay. And now, I'm not you know, trying to push that or anxious to sell that one, but it okay. would probably work okay. Uh, uh, plus, you have issues getting anything from anywhere, especially right. from Europe now, right. uh, that, you know, it, it could take nine months or, or, or a year, and I, yeah. I, I uh, either from Germany or probably 80% of the statues we, we buy come from uh, okay. bronze statues from Italy, that there's uh, no, no particular reason uh, uh, okay. not, not uh, to, uh, 
uh, to use it. But, you know, uh, again, it's... Uh, All right, well, let's leave it uh, uh, for this discussion. Let's leave it there. We are going to go with bronze. We're going to go with Frank's record. Well, it's really the two of us really collaborating. And But Frank, the expert, uh, we're going to do it in bronze. So I guess the two options are we're going to look at what Frank has and then we're going to look at replicating it exactly custom and we'll weigh that and we'll report in on that. And I just wanted to give you also an update on, so that so that's Joe Reinholz. And again, I want to give a shout out to Jeff, Jeff Bertacki, and of course, everybody here at the Troost Co Monument Company that's really helping us. The Keller family, I want to give a shout out to Jennifer Lewis, who with her sister in upstate New York, and they have cradle graves. You've seen pictures that they help take care of. They're fantastic people. Jennifer's awesome. She told me that they have permission from Fort Hill Cemetery, and we're now working with a monument company right there to create a stone for little, her name was or uh, Verena, Verena, who was 12 days old. She passed in January, January 26th of 1892. And we're going to try and replicate the stone that's in the ground as much as we can and have us maybe a stone, a small stone, you know, the little tiny children, they have the smaller stones. So that's in the works. And they're giving us a discount because of the nature of the uh, what we're doing how cool is that so I think it's going to be around seven or eight hundred dollars which for that kind of thing is there's going to be some custom engraving Jeanette Stevens at Forest Lawn Glendale Hollywood Hills again she was from the episode of the Babes of Inglewood she was the one that does not have a marker right now we are still checking with next of kin I have lost connection with the woman that was working with me the email has disappeared. Cannot find you on Instagram. If you see this, please let's reconnect. And I'm so sorry. Do not remember. I get a hundred emails a day and I was saving that one and it's gone. So we've lost connection, but we're going to do that. I want to give a shout out to Frank Shia, who got us the information and it was helping. And then a couple of other quick notes. Little Feller, Bohemian National Cemetery. As of the filming and release of this, the, that stone may actually be installed with his picture. That's the Eastland disaster. I'll put the link in for that. And finally, Lori Weinberg's mom, Norma Waslovas, over here across the street at Oak Ridge Cemetery, Glen Oak, here in Hillside, $1,445. We paid for that. That is in. But Frank, we've been alerted it's in the wrong position. So I talked to the cemetery. They they're said, as soon as we can, we're going to move it to the right. But I'm going to go out. I'm going to film as much of this as I can. And we're going to follow up right now with that footage. So thanks, Frank. My pleasure. And stay connected here. Here it comes. Okay, our first stop here down the street from Frank's place at Queen of Heaven Cemetery. We're at Joe Reinholz's grave, and I wanted to give you a quick look. Let's walk over there and show you the base in a little more detail than we've really ever looked. And I want to give you a little bit more rationale on why we're doing this in bronze versus granite. And as I come through here, I see even more reasons to do it. But let's let's first take a look at this base here now. You can actually see the outline of the original statue. And it, gosh, it's probably four and a half to five inches max. Now the statue we're getting is gonna have a much bigger base. It's gonna come all the way out to the edge. It's going to give it a lot more stability. So I like that. I can see, yes, as Frank was saying, no signs of any epoxy which would be stuck in there the type they use super strong now the other thing we're going to do here i'm showing the base so we're talking about taking this off and turning it over and recessing some bolts to the threaded rods to give it additional security so i think we're going to be okay i think we're going to be okay doing it this way now the other big thing that I noticed coming out here, especially today driving through because I was more looking out for it, is there's a plethora of new bronze statues. So 
you know, these the last decade, the last five years, we've got a lot better security out here. Cameras. We have. <laughs> looking right here, there's bronze uh, relief. Actually, it's not even a. It's a little bit more than a relief. I'll show you a couple, but there are a lot of. There's a lot of bronze work out here. And I did check with the cemetery, and in talking to Frank, he said, no, no, there's, there's another, look at that, look at that over there. There's a huge bronze statue. Look at that. And he said, no, no, it's, nobody's, nobody has stolen the statues out here. Now, again, we don't know if this was stolen or not. I, I think it was, but anyway. Let's move ahead from here to, we'll go down the street to Oak Ridge Cemetery, which is Glen Oak, Oak Ridge, and let's go see the stone. I'm, I'm anxious to see Norma's stone. And then from there, we'll go to National Bohemian and wrap it up. That's all we have in Chicago. The rest of the stuff's out of town. All right, let's go. Okay, we're at Oak Ridge, Glen Oak, and I see it right there. Boy, you got to give these people kudos here at Oak Ridge. Not only are they really nice and helpful, remember the guys that were helping us? But look at the job they did. Is this nice or what? That's beautiful. They, I literally just talked to them a couple of days ago, and look at the action. We've got mom here. The stone looks beautiful, beautiful, and they put they got it all in here nice, tapped down, and they've got seeds, the grass, grass is going to grow. Boy, that's fantastic. Well, Norma Weslovas, February 7th, 1923, November 14th, 1967. Rest in peace, Miss Weslovas, and I'm really happy to see you guys. This, this is just so fantastic. So fantastic that we are able to to get this done. All right, let's head over to Bohemian National and see about little Willie, little little feller. We've arrived at Bohemian National Cemetery and we are at the Rodina Novotny, which means family Novotny, family plot. And there you see the foundation for the gravestone for the little boy, little little feller he was named. Tag 396 on his body, sadly, at the morgue. For many days, they couldn't identify him. I think he was the last person victim of the Eastland disaster that was identified. And it took two little boys, playmates, schoolmates, to come in and say, that's my friend. All of Chicago wanted to know who he was for the days that he laid there, the last one to be identified, and he finally was. Very, very sad story. I'll put the link in the description box. The stone is, I believe, from what I understand, in, and I'm happy to say that we went to the extra effort to get a picture put on you know the porcelain pictures like you see on many of the other stones here of little willie from the picture you can see you can see it on find a grave but it, it's it's a heartbreaking story and i'm so very glad so we will come back when the stone is in but i have to give kudos to the people here at bohemian national because they had the foundation, I understand, in the wrong place, and they wanted to be very careful and respectful, and on their own, I mean, I didn't know, but they went ahead and this is exactly where he is buried, and they moved it to the exact position on their own dime. I think many people wouldn't, wouldn't be doing that, so thanks and kudos to the people here at Bohemian National Cemetery. I want to thank, again, and conclude all the, all our friends, all of you viewers, subscribers, Patreon, PayPal, Super Chats, and all the money that's been sent in. You guys are amazing to make this possible. And that's going to wrap up this episode. This episode is dedicated 
to you, reaching this big number of subscribers, the size of the channel just increases our reach to make sure that the stories are told and as many people as we can tell their stories and to make sure that they are not forgotten. And we will continue on. And thank you. Thank you.